Welcome to the channel guys, it's the Eradicator and it is here just like at the start of every month, the monthly report. So let's go, let's have a look at what Cloud Imperial Games worked throughout the course of the month of May and here we're just going to have a little summary of the best lines of this monthly report. So we are first going to start with, intellig with uh, artificial intelligence and we're going to have new animations here from NPCs. For example, they'll be scratching their heads, uh, cracking their knuckles or they'll be stretching. The teams are also bringing the dynamic conversation from Squadron 42 into the Persistent Universe and they are going to start with three cases. First, a mess table with four people. Then they're going to have a conversation with idle people. And finally, a conversation next to an arcade machine. Uh, next, NPCs are also going to be able to use quantum travel in a much more effective way. And especially when they're going to be initializing Quantum Drive, they'll be able to alter their speed, which, for example, let's say they're under attack, that's going to allow them to escape a little bit uh, with, uh, with uh, more efficiency. Also, speaking of NPCs, they are now better at pushing trolleys. Uh, they'll be able to manage their strength a little bit more and uh, be more aware of the objects that will be uh, around them. They will also be able to more easily get out of a situation in which they would happen to be stuck. Uh, speaking of NPCs, we're not uh, we're not done yet, but uh, we're, for example, they will be able to better use their weapons. For example, if they are not seeing you, they may stop shooting in order to preserve their ammunition, unless the code tells them to keep on shooting. I suppose that this would happen if they want to intimidate the players, maybe. Also, they will try to be more careful when it comes to other NPCs and players around them. So, for example, NPCs will not be shooting at neutrals or friendlies. And the same goes, not, it's not just for uh, friendly NPCs, but hostile NPCs will also try to preserve members of their groups as well. So if uh, uh, an NPC that belongs to their group goes in front of them, then they will try to stop shooting to not kill them, right? That makes sense. Also, uh, NPCs will now be able to fly more aggressively in combat situations, especially when there's going to be a capital ship. They will try, it, especially with the, um, the aggressive or bold or reckless pilots will now have uh, diving maneuvers in order to directly engage capital ships so that should be quite exciting to see talking about art now and it seems that we're gonna have new armor variations just like what we could see with the new nine tail armor variation for 3.17.1 and the closing has also been uh, worked on for the paro system Next, uh, we're going to talk about uh, some uh, damage maps, and this was done for the salvage mechanics coming up in 3.18 for a couple of ships. A new ground vehicle is now in final art, while a new space vehicle is in gray box phase. A gray box phase. It seems that also work has been done on, it, on its cockpit and also its dashboard, which apparently are making good progress. I have no idea about what the ship is. Could be a, a bomber. There've been there's been rumors for a bomb uh, a bomber but when it comes to the ground vehicle i have absolutely no idea i would love however the new space vehicle to be some kind of uh, space taxi that would be great anyway the badu merchantman is still in gray box phase and uh, the teams at cig are working on its uh, inferior part so basically the the underbelly of uh, the ship as well as its wings we also have a little surprise. The SRV from Argo is in development. You know, it's this ship with its powerful tractor beam that will be able to to basically pull uh, bigger ships or ships that are in trouble or broke. You know, maybe they are broken. So these ships will be able to be pulled and sent back to a facility where they will be repaired instead of just abandoning the ship. And that's great because let's say you have a lot of inventory into your ship, you don't want to be losing that inventory. Maybe you'll be asking for somebody in an Argo to come and pull you so that you can save your ship and what is inside. I love this. Also, a lot of work has been done on the Drake Corsair with progress made on turret airlock. Also, uh, the crew compartment, the crew cabin is now almost uh, is now completed, including the captain's cabin right next to the cockpit. However, work on the cargo hold was put on hold because they want to be adding more details further down the line. Also, the exterior of the ship is still in gray box phase and work was done on the landing gear as well as the remote turrets. Now let's talk about the game engine very quickly and uh, well the Gen 12 improvements are still coming in and for example right now Gen 12 is now taking a, is now including a fog the the fog that's part in the in, in the game maybe volumetric fog perhaps uh, but volumetric clouds uh, are still not implemented because work has just started on those next let's talk about features 
and in the future it will be possible to for players on foot to scan objects around them. Uh, a door now will be able to tell its state and reveal if it can be hacked or not. Scan players will also reveal their physical inventories and scan corpses will reveal the cause of death. Talking about ships, and uh, we have a good news here. Uh, in the future, ships will stop shutting down if an explosion is uh, being felt on the hull, for example, which is really quite a relief because right now, if you are flying a small ship like an Avenger, or an M50, or an Aurora, every time there is a big explosion on the ship, the ship just shuts down and you're just stuck and starting in there and there's only one thing to do is just to kill yourself eventually. It's very annoying and I am glad that they're going to be fixing this. I cannot wait for the update that will bring this fix. The Montreal Studio now is finally uh, finalizing uh, the work on the Reclaimer. Uh, the Reclaimer derelicts will be actually both in space and on planetary surface, like, like Microtech, just like in the picture that we can see there. But I didn't know that it would have space ones too, so that's wonderful. Also, we are going to have inhabited uh, derelicts for the 600i and the Mercury Star Runner, which will both be on Daymar. They will also have dedicated missions and NPCs will be uh, will actually live there, so these will be populated by NPCs. The Lorville rework is also uh, continuing its progress here and the, the concept phase is done and now the team has started the pre-production phase. Finally, building interiors are now in concept phase and should offer new gameplay opportunities right within landing zones and that is also exciting. We need more reasons to go to landing zones and if we can have gameplay opportunities and ways to make money in there, it's going to be um, a good opportunity, a chance for players to spend more time out there. So there we have it guys, these were the crunchy information that we had in this monthly report. Um, once again, um, we could we can only notice that uh, we had no information regarding server meshing or the uh, persistent ent entity streaming. And I think it's a shame that we have to wait for a Chris Roberts letter to tell us about the progress that was made regarding these key technologies that players are eagerly waiting. So hopefully we're going to have more news next month. Right? We'll see. Anyway, that's all for today. But let me know in the comment section down below, guys, if there's something that really uh, caught your mind or something that uh, that that you're excited about what was shared here by CIG. Do you think the SRV will come by the end of this year? What do you think of uh, building in tiers? What are they going to be bringing for us? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'm sure we're going to have some really interesting comments to be reading here. That's all for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to have more daily Star Citizen content. A big shout out to Eric Ohm, Dr. Fabian, Captain Snake, DJ Dunn, and Geek Citizen. It's the Eradicator. I'll see you guys later.